So we are here to present the International Genetic Engineer Machine Competition. I'm Danus and this is Hugo. And we're just two of the ten members that we have. And so what is IGM? IGM is a global science and engineering competition in synthetic biology where students from various universities can think up of their own products, their own ideas to solve any problems they imagine or just uh, make any ideas that they have happen. And we like synthetic biology. So it also encompasses uh, eight different uh, tracks that students can basically focus on, which is, well, that's just a list of them. Basically, you can have a project that can be solving environmental issues, but it can also be some improvement in a technology that already exists but has flaws. That's a perfectly fine product, it doesn't need to be on a global scale, kind of like all the time. And this year we have 223 teams competing from across the world in five different uh, regional competitions, as you see. And I'm going to talk very briefly about the product that happened before because you already had some examples today. Oxen production by Imperial College in last year. They created cells which uh, form mutualistic relationships with specific uh, plant roots and produce auxin, which causes plant roots to grow deeper. And that way you can have more efficient uh, plants basically in the desert where there's scarce water. The arsenic biosensor is probably the most famous Edinburgh project from 2006, if I'm correct, which uh, is nearly commercialized at the moment, where they created cells that was the first time people thought about this, uh, for cells to detect uh, heavy metals in groundwater or just ground soil. And the cells give you a light a color response, red for toxic, yellow for and green for perfectly fine water. Wood Warden was a last year's project from Groningen in the Netherlands. They created cells which detect meat which starts to rot, because Meat, meat, when it rots, it produces chemicals which humans can't smell yet or see yet, but it becomes toxic already. So the cells detect that toxin and change green. So you could, you could spray the meat products before packaging and sell them together with the cells. And once the meat starts going bad, the, all, the whole chunk turns green. However, this wasn't very popular in the industry and people don't seem to like eating genetically modified bacteria for not a very important reason. So, yeah, and Health Cell, this last year's Stanford and Brown project, where they took resistances to various environmental factors such as acidity, heat, cold, and salts, and lack of water, and put it all into one cell, and said that that cell could survive hell if it needed to. And that cell was uh, part of their project about uh, basically sending bacteria to Mars because conditions there are very different from those on Earth in most areas. And they would need uh, those resistance in there a lot. This brings us to our this year's team. Now, we have a very nice artist in our team who's a painter. He drew this by hand and all the pictures he did from behind. That's cool. So that's our members. Yannick, Gavin, Alexander, Carl, Hugo, Danus, Christiana, Harry, and Wake. And we are from all over the place. We represent eight different countries. And our product motto is don't let waste get wasted. And we're dealing with metal ion and organic material contamination. Our product revolves basically about Scottish industry a lot, about distilleries, leather and textile industries, because those industries seem to generate uh, waste that contains heavy metals and also organic material which could be converted into usable materials or bioethanol, for example, to fuel cars. Our chassis is uh, a silk septilis and not a coli because, uh, well, it's a gram positive, not shaped catalase positive obligate error rope, but 
the main reason was its correlation, because if we ever want to sell our product to those industries, we would want it to be capable of uh, being stored for a while, and spores allow that to happen. And also, bioconformation is spontaneous in that with here, but it can also be controlled to our purposes. Another product is uh, split into several main basically ideas, which is metal decontamination, metal detection, capture and removal, and the parts in, in that part, and waste recycling, the generic gene assembly method, which is a novel basically technology for IGM, and other people in the world, and we're working with a uh, wholesale model which we're trying to produce that other teams could use later. Right, so we decided to focus on iron, zinc, and copper. So while these metals are not um, dangerous in the concentrations that they are in the waste per se, we still want to be able to reuse them. Hence the name, um, our motto, let's not waste waste, yeah. something like that. Um, so we're using the fur transcription factor, fur is ferric uptake depressor, which means when iron comes into contact with that protein, it basically binds <laughs> to uh, the fur box. And um, when it binds to the fur box, it means this sort of repressor based in represses the, um, the gene upstream from it. So when iron is present within the cell, it will repress the gene in front of the ferric uptake repressor. What we wanted to do is, in fact, uh, capture metal at the same time. With, um, so we took the strongest siderophore there was. Siderophores are basically peptides that you that bind to iron or any metals. And enterobactin is found normally in E. coli, but we tried to put it in Bacillus subtilis. Now Bacillus subtilis actually has Bacillibactin, which is its native siderophore, but here we'll show that we can replace it with enterobactin, which is not only stronger, but also it's fluorescent under UV so we would be able to detect it um, when we have made our construct and our new genetically modified bacillus subtilis. Now this is the pathway and the first three genes actually of the, um, to synthesize bacillibactin are exactly the same as enterobactin. So what we were looking to replace are the, these genes right there which differ for bacillibactin and enterobactin and these genes are all close to each other, so we want basically to put them all at once inside the bacillus subtilis. And how we did this is with gene break, because before you could only put it, you had to make four different, three different reactions to introduce each of the separate genes, where with a gene break you're able to put them all at once, and so you have one reaction for four genes. So that's great. How would we remove the metal when we've captured it? That was a big question, and that's why uh, bacillus subtilis we can can sporulate, uh, not sporulate, form biofilms. So when it forms biofilms, it basically forms the biofilm and has the iron there, or zinc, or copper, and you can remove that. But we needed to put it under the control of um, a repressor, a ferric uptake repressor, which responds to iron. So. The genes, the master regulator for uh, biofilm formation is SINAR, so it actually represses biofilm formation. And we saw this pathway right there, and we thought, why not replace SINAI, which actually acts on SINAR, and if we replace it with the um, ferric uptake repressor in the fur box, then when iron is present, it would repress SINAR, and since SINAR represses biofilm, biofilms would be formed because SINAR would be repressed. So now what we had was biofilm was forming whenever iron was present and at the same time with the enterobactin it was getting captured. So we were able to recover some iron from the waste, which is what we wanted to do, reuse waste. At the same time we did a side project with fusion proteins in the sense that this, our, um, our cell can also create ethanol, but more, ref more likely refine the, um, the waste that you have in the whiskey waste or leather industry, which is 
you've got, for example, um, pyruvate or acetyl CoA that you get from there, and we wanted to make that and get some ethanol out of it. And so we introduced a pathway from Zimolonas mobilis, another different organism. Normally Zimolonas mobilis has PDC and ADHP, these two genes, but we wanted to make a, fug a fusion of the two proteins so that it would go at fa faster normally. So we introduced that pathway, checked with the non-fused proteins and with the fused one, and we saw that the fused one had a higher yield of ethanol. Now why is that? Um, from what we can see is acetyl aldehyde is actually toxic in way to the cell and we're actually reducing the time that acetyl aldehyde is present within the cell because as soon as it gets pyruvate goes to acetyl aldehyde and PDC since the proteins PDC and HHP are fused it basically goes to ethanol right away so we got a higher yield of ethanol and we were able to what you can do with that is when you've got bioethanol you can in a way use it or cars or whatever you want. It's not dr drinkable, per se, but you can use it for the green technology. Now here I'm going to explain a bit about gene drink. There is a technology called Genabler, and we decided to use Genabler, and the Genabler technology allows us to, what would have normally taken nine reactions with 10 different genes, takes us with uh, one reaction, because we're already pre-forming, we're pre-assembling the, the genes already, and then inserting the whole pre-assembled assembly, in a way, inside the, um, the gene. So, how did we change the amyloid to gene break? Because uh, with um, IgM, you need everything to be in bio break format, which means they have, they they require special ends, sticky ends, to be able to be compatible, and other teams can use it. So we added, um, we changed the amyloid to gene break by adding specific um, ends that could be compatible with the uh, bio bricks and now we can use the technology within IGM. So that's a major breakthrough because it will save a lot of time for future IGM teams. The whole cell model was made by our computer engineers and they were trying mostly to see whether the um, protein, the modular protein which makes the enterobactin, the NRPS, it's a huge protein, it's non-ribosomal um, peptide synthase so that is, it, in a way, like a ribosome in the sense that it makes peptides, chains of peptides, but it doesn't create any protein, it creates small peptides. So it takes a toll on the cell to have a lot of NRPSs, and we need to check how many can we have introduced per, in, in the cell with the cell still being viable. And these are what our engineers worked on. Um, we've had collaborations, so that's a good thing about IGM is that you need to have collaborations. For Stanford Brown, we were able to collaborate because we previous teams had done gene markers and they needed some gene markers because they're sending some bacillus subtilis up in space and they need to know if it has reached a certain phase of its growth and with our markers they would be able to see that. Newcastle is, they're the experts in bacillus subtilis in the UK so we've been collaborating a lot with them, they sent us some strains and we were able to collaborate with them and Ivry, which is a French team, is actually working on um, they're making a library of fur boxes, so these repressors, because they can be, you can have a letter or more, and some of them are more optimized for something. And they're making a library of these, and they're asking us to test um, these the fur box libraries for, uh, for our organism. Now you need, the big thing about IGM is again the human practices. So we tried to bring in saying that we're a green technology, which is true because we're trying to, the waste from the whiskey, textile, and leather industry we're reusing them. Um, whiskey is very important in Scotland. Also, Scotland is one of the greener parts of um, of Europe. So we're trying to reuse and have uh, green technology such as cars running on ethanol in the future. That's one of the big things. And um, somehow Edinburgh is uh, well, somehow it has it's one of the they have the major synthetic biology centers. So Scotland is investing a lot of money in synthetic biology and. Um, we're trying to see uh, if they would like to continue synthetic biology to have even more, uh, if it would continue to be funded as well as it is right now, where it may be to become an independent country or even stay within the UK. Synthetic biology is one of the developing fields in, uh, in science and biology. So we're trying to talk with the right people. So why should you join uh, IGM? <laughs> Prestige. 
Um, well, um, it is the biggest competition in uh, biology, so they do select, you do go to an interview of uh, 30 or 60 people and then they make a sort of selection and it does look good on your CV and if you go to conferences. You do go to conferences, we went to London to uh, show our projects and dub from people from Imperial and other, other big universities, you get experience. Um, that's one of the major things. I came into the lab, for example, I'm, there were a lot of things that I didn't that you don't do um, when you're in, even if you're doing biology right now. You're not you're going to have a set of experiments that you have to do each day, um, but that doesn't teach you how to think on your own and how to do the your experience alone, like your experiments alone in the lab. What you're going to be doing in this internship, you learn a lot more than you learn in, in all these years in the lab following just a set kind of protocol. Teamwork was uh, pretty hard for some team members, so you'll have to be able to work navigate, with it, yeah. navigate and find compromises. So that's always good to learn. And um, how do you join? Well, in December, normally, at least first it was in December, normally Chris French sends out an application form on uh, for the relevant people on the, on the email. So he, he's going to, like, it's sent out to everyone, I think. In biology. In biology. But people who are not in biology are, will get informed, uh, engineers and artists. Some of their own professors. There you go, you should, you should get in. So generally, you, you should, it's not too hard to, uh, to apply. You just sign back, yes, I'm very interested, here's my CV. And then you present yourself, have a little speech ready. Because a lot of people didn't have a speech ready, believe it or not. So uh, it's hard to get in if you're not, if you don't look like you're interested already. And now our acknowledgements. So Salsa, Genabler. Genabler is our technology, so we have to acknowledge them. Society for Microbiology and the rest. Any questions regarding IGM? Since you're not here, do you have to Second or third? Second or third is best. Mm -hmm. Because you won't have some... Well, I'm, I, I say that you learn most of your lab experience um, in third year. In third year, so it's generally... It's more accepted in third year. However, if you've done very well in first and second year, and you, some people have already taken some internships, in the lab, mm -hmm. so it's very possible to there were a lot of people that didn't seem interested when we applied, so it wasn't very hard to get in. So if you're a motivated and interested student, well, like us, the synthetic biology gives you a very, I mean, the synthetic biology society gives you a very good background to what's been going on in general in, in this field. So well, by the time you reach third year or or the mock presentation in the innovative learning week, where anyone can. Make their own product and, mm. and try. In innovative learning, and that, that would even spin out into a summer project later. So yeah, I mean, there are opportunities all the time. You just need to. Yeah, you, you just need to, need, to need to be active. Have the door open to and uh, just go for it. But uh, again, innovative learning week, there will be some presentations by IGM or for IGM. So if you take part in it, I know some people took part in it last year. We were like. Some of my team members who weren't part of the IGM yet did a workshop on IGM. They made the workshop themselves because they were so interested that they wanted. Because it's a very, it's a global thing, IGM. So you can read it over the internet, and it's um, it always the championships always happen by MIT because IGM was made in the first place by MIT and then it got global. And that's why it's last year, this year they basically automatically qualified for the team. Yeah. Any, any more questions? No? Good. Awesome. Uh, yeah. How many guys think people who are not in biology are participating in the team? So there's a lot about, it depends what you are, if you're not a biologist, if you're a computer, if you're a computer scientist or an engineer, you will be very used because um, synthetic biology, a big part of it is um, modeling. So you want to have computer scientists, scientists to be able to model for you some, you know, some models on how the cell would react if you add this to that, if you don't add this to that. And if you already have the, the, the proof that this experiment could work theoretically on a computer, then why not try it out in real life? If you're an artist or somebody who's doing uh, human, like, human sciences, one big part is, because synthetic biology is kind of questionable sometimes, so you need to have ethics involved, 
and if you're doing human sciences, then you'll probably have a place because a big part of it is also talking to people. For example, this year we're trying to get some uh, interviews from the, in the, from the industry. Would you use this over this? You know, what what kind of waste treatment would you use um, depending on what's relevant? Some of it. Like it yeah, needs and it's, and making proper questions for interviews isn't very easy. The thing is, with, when you're working with bacteria, is that they can revert from being useful to being completely harmful and useless. So you need to be to have people aware of that, and um, but you also need to de-demonize bacteria because even though they can do that, they're actually pretty much used everywhere and very beneficial. Our artists have a very good time. He got a one-week crash course in biology, so he would know what we're actually doing as a team. So he's fine with everything. And, yeah. Any other